Good morning, everyone, and welcome to All Faiths Unitarian Congregation Sunday service. It's so wonderful to see all of you out there in the world checking in on your commute, computers and smartphones. We live in an age of blessings with this internet connection while we are separated physically. My name is Joyce Rame, and I will lead today's service. Our message today is going to be given by our founding member, Frankie Jennings. And today is the first Sunday of our program on the Unitarian Universalist Principles. Here, you will find a diverse and inclusive spiritual community where we welcome people with many beliefs. You can bring your whole self, your full identity, your questioning mind and expanse of heart. At All Face, we have more than one way of experiencing the world and understanding the sacred. No matter who you are, wherever you are on your spiritual journey, and no matter whom you love, you are truly welcome here. Today we have some announcements to make. You will check your computer email messages during the week. Regina sends out the regular happenings. The Climate Action Team is going to have a special Zoom meeting on Tuesday afternoon, August 4th at 1.30 a.m. at uh, 1.30 p.m. <laughs> and Joan Marshall has invited you to participate in this. The Zoom connections will be sent out to you. And they will be hearing from Joe Bonacio about an effort in Orange County to pass an amendment on the November ballot that would establish the legal right to clean water and a protected natural environment. And this is part of the Florida Rights of Nature campaign that was introduced right here in Lee County last year by Clean Water Now. So please participate. Today, Reverend CJ has gone to New York for summer study and because he's gone from Florida, he has to be quarantined for two weeks. And so he's using that for his study time. Uh, also, Joseph is taking a day off and he has arranged for us to have a guest singer and pianist, Lynn Hart, who is with us and we're very happy to have you with us, Lynn. Lynn is a pianist vocal coach out of Indiana University and in Ball State. In addition to developing new Broadway musicals and cabaret performances alongside the likes of Stephen Sondheim and Lynn Manuel Miranda, she has worked in churches of all denominations, so that's a good fit for us. She and her wife Emily moved to Fort Myers to be closer to family, and she now works as a musical director and accompany us across Southwest Florida. Our speaker today is going to be Frankie Jennings, and she is a Chief Executive Officer of Basic Learning Skills. They provide overall leadership, working closely with parents, teachers, and administrators of school districts to ensure the success of the tutorial program. BLS provides free tutoring to students with an emphasis on reading and mathematics. She is a well-known community leader. And several of the schools that Basic Learning Skills serves are in neighborhoods that Ms. Jennings represented during her tenure on the Fort Myers City Council. We're pleased to have her with us. She and her husband, Roy Kennex, our founding members of All Faiths Unitarian Congregation. We're very happy to have her as our guest speaker today on the first Unitarian Universalist principle, the inherent worth and dignity of every person. Please join in reciting our words for lighting the challenge. Uh, oh. 
I skip something. This is where we have enter, rejoice, and come in. And I just want to share a personal item about that with you. Normally I attend the services at home with my dog, Bella. She's a chocolate Labrador. And I get up at home and I sing enter, rejoice, and come in just as we do here. And we have all the greeting of each other. And Bella gets up and runs around and barks at the same time I'm singing. And in the middle of the song, she stands up and puts her paws up against me. It's the only time she ever does that. So she loves and rejoice and come in. So I invite you all to join in singing 361, enter, rejoice, and come in. some time for the dis to discover it was a foot infection so that was treated and he went home yesterday 
So we can celebrate that good news. We hope that he recovers well. Jan Guardiano went into the hospital. She's been in the hospital for about a week, uh, suffering from weakness. They investigated many, many things, and they finally uh, decided it's probably a case of sodium deficiency. She's been on a high water and low salt diet, but sometimes those can be too extreme. So she's feeling much better and sounding much better on the phone uh, the last day or two. So we're hoping that she'll be able to go home soon. And one thing I want to share with you, none of these people have the COVID-19 virus. That's one of the first questions that people ask when, when they hear that someone's gone to the hospital. And now I'd like to ask everyone to close your eyes, take a deep breath, and let us turn our minds and our hearts to contemplate the inherent worth and dignity of every person. Our opening words today are by Marjorie Montgomery. And I, I like this because in this time of trouble, this emphasizes all the things that I'm glad about. I am glad I came into this world able to think and reason. I am glad I came into this world able to feel pain and pleasure, sorrow and joy, anger and love. I am glad I am able to heal, both physically and mentally, able to be aware and to grow and to change. I am glad I am able to respond to love, beauty, and truth, able to discern reality, face it, and accept it. I am glad I came into this world able to feel with others, to care for others. I am glad I came into this world unique and singular. I am glad I came into this world as an unfinished creature, moving towards completion. I give thanks for the many gifts of life. I am glad I came into this world and I hope you are glad too. And now we will have our prelude music by Lynn Hart.
Our reading today is by Sarah Lambert. I first encountered Unitarian Universalism in college through some friends who were active in the peace movement. But I didn't attend an actual Sunday service until I went home with a friend for a wedding during my senior year. And the main thing I remember about that first visit is how moved I was by the sermon offered by Reverend Peter Richardson. He was just returning from a leave of absence after the death of his wife of many years. And he spoke in an incredibly personal way about the long grieving process he had endured. I awakened that morning as if I had never before actually participated in my own spiritual journey. Perhaps because the minister laid himself bare, I too was laid bare. I felt seen and heard and eager to experience more. I felt I had come home. I had grown up in a church that believed that individuals were fallen beings, weekly repeating a liturgy that confessed my unworthiness to even pick up the crumbs at the foot of God's table. I had lost my sense of being at home in the denomination of my childhood. Even though I loved my first visit to a UU church, it took me three more years before I was ready to root myself in religious community again. On my second foray into a UU church, this time in Brooklyn, I sat in my pew and I read the open and embracing words of the congregation's covenant, which included my whole person to the table. Here, there would be no discussion of unworthiness. Instead, our inherent worthiness as human beings was emphasized. I had recently been through a difficult breakup with my college boyfriend, and I was feeling lost and very alone. That Sunday morning, I find myself literally crying with relief to find a community of faith I could belong to, a place where I could bring my doubts, my questions, my confusion, and still be accepted. I heard clearly the church's unspoken message, come as you are and be welcome. Here, you can be yourself. Here, you can continue the journey. And now I invite you to join together in singing hymn number 302, Children of the Human Race.
morning. Good morning. Happy morning to you. I am delighted to share with you this morning, for my heart is filled with grace and thanksgiving. We are kicking off the discussion of the Unitarian Universalist Seven Principles. I will talk about number one, inherent worth and dignity of every person. Inherent worth and dignity of every person, every human being. I will cover this principle in three parts. Number one, the value or your inherent identity. Part two, who are you? The answer is a gift. And what are you doing with your gift? Part three, how to keep it whole. Actualization, manifesting it, making it happen, sharing it. Part one, your gift of inherent worth and dignity is a powerful gift. If you see yourself a creative being here to express joy, give, receive, love, and contribute to life on this planet, so will your self-image be affirmed. If you think you are small, oppressed, hopeless, your world will confirm your belief. Do not, do you know your worth? Do you know your values? You do not need anyone else to confirm it. And if you do not recognize your value, you will not gain it by getting others to approve. If you believe that you are who your parents, teachers, minister, politician tell you that you are, you may sometimes shrink and feel small and helpless. Who are you? Who am I? Perhaps you have come to the question in your life where you are asking all the all important questions. Be careful how you answer. For in your answer lies your destiny. The power of knowing and believing in our inherent worth as a human being help one with hope, will, purpose, and inspiration. It is help it helps you to ask these important questions of yourself. We are spiritual beings coming and going through a material experience. The big lovely home, the lovely cars, degrees, all the material things that will vanish, disappear. You and I are more than our bodies, emotions, thoughts, and experiences. We lived in our spirit before we arrived on earth, and we will live in spirit after we depart the world. Where and while you are here, we live in spirit. But if you limit yourself, we will not enjoy, you will not enjoy the magnitude, the abundance, the joy that is here for us. Our most noblest purpose in life is to remember our spiritual nature in the face of suggestions, put down, oppressions, and appearance of being material 
but not serve you well. Our spiritual nature is the only thing about us which the world cannot tamper or take away. I want to repeat that. Our spiritual nature is the only thing about us with which the world cannot tamper or take away. No matter what experience we pass through, what we gain or lose in drama of earth or what people enter or leave, our true selves remain whole, intact, and perfect. We always had it and we always will. I'm going to share with you a reading that I read often sometimes when I feel I'm off track. And I'm asking myself all these questions, who am I and what is going on? And it was written by Louise Hay, a great teacher, a great writer. And this reading is entitled, New Beliefs. In the infinite of life where I am, all is perfect, whole, and complete. The past has no power over me because I am willing to change. I see the past as necessary to bring me where I am today. I am willing to begin where I am right now to clean the rooms of the mental house. I know it doesn't matter where I start, so I now begin with the smallest and the easiest room. And in that way, I will see results quickly I am thrilled to be in the middle of this experience, adventure, for I know I will never go through this experience again. I am willing to set myself free, set yourself free. All is well in your world, in my world. The journey we take together today is inclusive. Others are involved, religion, but neither is it limited to any creed. Our beliefs should not bind us with more labels. It should free us from the limited identity we have accepted. We seek not more recrimination, but greater self-discovery. We are not attempting to rid ourselves of any of who we are. We are learning to celebrate who we are. This journey invites you to look at who you are and how you live your life. Such self-evaluation may at first seem frightening, but don't stop there. To the contrary, if you fear or fail to look within and search, you will not find the essence and the beauty of who you are. Part two. Now let us continue our journey. What we are doing with this great and wonderful gift of life. I am a human being born in, and inherit my worth and dignity. I'm aware of being alive, joyful, proud, and sometimes blissful. Our real identity is found in spirit. Everything else is like a fleeting story. Our passage is like a great steamship moving through a foggy night at sea. 
Steadily, the boat cut through the mist while all the boat activities carry on in unimpeded, uninterrupted. Morning comes and the fog lifts. Meanwhile, the boat moves on to its chosen port. That's the way it is. Our lives are filled with activity, COVID-19. Black Lives Matter fighting, marching for justice. Police brutality, election, babies being born, graduation, family affairs. That's our life. That's with our boat moving on through all of these fogs. But at a point, the fog will lift. And meanwhile, the boat moves on to its chosen port. Life purpose. Stay on purpose with your life. Be committed. Make evaluation. Make changes. Get quiet. Find your purpose. Your purpose will only come can be found. Your purpose can only be found in service to others and in being connected to something far greater than your body, your mind, your ego. I want to repeat that. Your purpose will only be found in service to others and in being connected to something far greater than your body, mind, ego. Words of the late Dr. Wayne Dyer. But how can we be sure of our purpose? I will give you four researched fact qualities which lead to a strong sense of purpose. Awareness values, admiration, and congruent behaviors. The good news is that these aspects can be nurtured. Simply mindfulness practice designed to activate these four qualities of purpose. Awareness mean to practice connecting with what's alive in you. An intention to visualize your best life. Congruent behavior is the practice of aligning value with action. And the resilience to unlock, unhook, from rigidity. Be flexible. Let it flow. Let it flow like a river in your soul. Be flexible. Let it flow. Be mindful. How to keep it whole, which is part three. As we bring closure, this message, let us tune in and allow the spirit reveal wisdom and understanding to help you. Wisdom and understanding are not restricted to time, space, appearance, financial situation, or physical condition. Turn within and receive your daily guidance. I turn in and tune out all distractions, illusion. I tune in and relax. In a state of relaxation, I am guided to know what I am to do and how I am to do it. In this deep state of relaxation, you will feel that love and will become 
spiritually grounded in truth. A house without a solid foundation would not stand for exceptionally long. The same is true for us. If our foundational spiritual truth is not grounded in our hearts, our heart is the foundation that supports everything we do. If we do not believe an idea in our hearts of heart, we will not hold on to it when life gets tough. When we are grounded in spiritual truth, we can weather the storm and life and tune in to something greater. Namaskar. I behold the Christ in you. Thank you, Frankie. That was just a most beautiful, beautiful sermon. You, you always inspire me. You always have. And I guess I'll take the mask off. Um, it, it was great. So be grounded in love. And as Oscar Wilde said, uh, just be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. And now we will take our offertory. If you would like to contribute to support our activities and services here at All Face, you can mail them to 2756 McGregor Boulevard in Fort Myers, 33901. Or you can visit our website, allfaceuu.org. We appreciate your generosity and your continuing support through these many months that we have not been able to gather in person. And Lynn? <laughs> Jupiter, which is in the spirit of our service today. Be the most that you can be, the biggest planet that we have in our solar system. That was beautiful. Our closing words today are by Robert Walsh. This is all about that self-affirmation that Frankie talked about so eloquently. I am wondrously wrought partly shaped by my biology, partly shaped by my culture, and partly self-shaped. I am so wonderfully fashioned that the workings of myself amaze and confuse me. I know 
I have the power to choose among many paths, yet most of the time I'm on autopilot, acting out of little examined assumptions, values, rituals, myths, appetites, and impulses. I can meet life in many ways. I can be tough-minded. I can be tender-hearted. I can move between activity and quietness. I can express my uniqueness and individuality, and I can forget myself in commitment to family and community. I can judge. I can bear witness to good and the evil around me. And, like the recently departed John Lewis, I can forgive. I can analyze theologies, figure the world out, and I can listen to the still small voice of conscience, intuition, the Holy Spirit. All these ways of meeting life and more are part of the potential that is me. But I'm afraid to move very far or very fast from the ways that have become comfortable. I seek the self-knowledge that may illuminate new possibilities in life, and I seek the courage to try them. Most of all, I pray for wholeness, as Frankie talked about, that wholeness, for a life in which my many ways of living can be connected and filled with the meaning of all of holy creation. Now we'll have our postlude. place for us. If you like today's service, you may just find that all faiths is a place for you. We thank Frankie for her superb and inspiring message today. Frankie, I, I could just listen to you all the rest of my life. And, and Lynn, it's such a joy to have you with us today. I hope uh, the next time Joseph takes a day off, we can have you back with us. Uh, we're really delighted with the beautiful music that you have shared with us today. And Regina, we're grateful to you for uh, operating the camera today. And I also want to thank another person in the room, our one person uh, congregation attending today, Roy Kennex, who is the husband of Frankie Jennings and partner in basic learning skills. And now, I would like to wish you all a healthy and happy and joyful and fulfilling week ahead. Please stay connected in whatever way you can to those you love and care for. 
and we will now extinguish the chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts and out into the world. 